What were you doing when you were 11 years old? When I was 11, I probably was ripping and running the streets, doing typical 11-year-old-ish. 11, what grade was I even in? Today is a bonus episode. I'm going to be talking about Mary Bell. Mary Bell was a 10, 11 year old who killed two young boys in the England area. Y'all homegirl was doing the most at 11 years old, but her life began pretty traumatizing. So it's kind of like you have a little sympathy. And as I began to read about her, it's like you begin to understand why the England or British laws did did things the way that they did due to kind of her past life and by her being a young girl. Mary Flora Bell was born May 26, 1957. Her mother had her when she was about 16 or 17 years old. Different articles say 16, some say 17, but nonetheless, she had her at a teenage age time frame. And it is said that her mother did not even want her when she was born. When she seen her at the hospital, she told the doctors to take that baby away from her. And it was like she got pregnant, but then she didn't really want the baby. And I don't know back in that time frame if she could even get an abortion or if abortions were even heard of back then. I mean, it's like 1957. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> so pretty much her mother named Betty did not want her and Mary was subjected to a lot of physical abuse and mental abuse. Her mother would often go away and it's listed that she was a prostitute but one article tried to say that she would go away on businesses but nonetheless she was doing what she wanted to do and she wasn't being a mother but then when she was present she would treat Mary like the scum of the bottom of her shoe. His own sister even witnessed her abusing Mary. Betty, Betty's sister even states that she was trying to give Mary up for adoption. There was a lady who had an unsuccessful adoption process and she was trying to give the baby up, but Betty's sister ended up catching on and was able to get Mary. And it was also said that Mary was pretty much accident prone. Like she would fall, she would get bruises. One time she fell out the window. And then there was one time where um, Mary had consumed some pills that her mother had laying around. So a lot of the family believed that she, the mother was doing these things to her. Often said that Betty long for the sympathy that Mary was receiving by all the acts that she was doing. Because you think about it, you're a teenage girl, you have this baby, and then the attention is not really on you. And they lived in poverty. It wasn't like they lived a really rich life, none, you know, nonetheless. But for you to treat your child like that, if you didn't want the baby, you should have really went through with the process. And, her, and then her family should have let her give her up because People don't realize your childhood trauma shapes you, like shapes you, man. And I say that because I know what childhood trauma is like. If you guys see my video on that, that's kind of why I chose this story because childhood trauma is so real. And when you become an adult, it's so much harder to really battle your demons. And if you don't have someone in your corner supporting you and backing you up and who, or who doesn't really understand the process of childhood trauma, it can be a very difficult road. As parents, we shape our children's future. We determine their outlook on life. We set the tone for things. So if you're constantly calling them the B word, you know, down talking them on, you know, just being not a parent, you know, this really sticks with them. Mental abuse is far more worse than physical abuse oftentimes because you remember the things that your parents said to you versus, you know, and how they treated you as well. So I think we really have to do better with that. And even though this was in 1957, you know, 1960s and stuff, it still doesn't matter because it still continues, especially in the generation that I'm in. And Mary herself even says that her mom used to even prostitute her out. But many of the family says that they did not know, they didn't witness it. But nonetheless, Mary has her own experiences that we cannot take away from her as 
family members. And what's even hurtful is by her being a young child, you know, she witnessed one of her friends being killed by being run over by a bus. So it was kind of like her life just began in this, you know, a disaster, poverty stricken environment. And it's so crazy that um, as I was reading this story, it just reminded me of my childhood because I remember telling someone like, there has to be more than life than living poor. Like it has to be, you know, sh the struggle mills and the struggle clothes and the struggle environments that we, we had or what we had to go through. And I look back at my life now and I'm like, wow, just to see the transformation, like I'm a, I'm a success story from what I went through because I didn't use that trauma to affect me, even though it has been really hard. But I wish that in that time frame, you know, someone would have really, you know, guided this young little lady. Because 10, be killing at 10? Oh my gosh. But it was even said that Mary, by the age of 10, she was a withdrawn child. People would call her weird. And I'm like, what is weird? Because you don't want to deal with people? But I can understand because if you didn't grow up in an environment where you were loved, you don't know how to give love. Love Being raised on love is so different than being raised on survival. And I don't think a lot of people truly understand that. And if you grew up on love, it's we're not saying that you don't know how to survive. But when you grew up on survival, that's the only thing you know. That's the only grind that you know. So you have to go out here and get it no matter what. Because you don't have mom, dad. You don't have family bailing you out so your only thing and your only mental is i gotta do what i gotta do to get it done and make no excuses so when you see people complaining in life you're like what are you complaining about like there's so much more to life than complaining about what you need to get done and they also said that she was very manipulative and she would she would always hover on the edge of violence and she would always hover on the edge of violence so there was a lot of things that they didn't know about Mary, and I do apologize for her sound, it's like a helicopter. So, four weeks before her very first murder, it was said that Mary had been acting very strange, out of her typical norm. On May 1st of 1968, Mary was playing with a three-year-old boy when he was badly injured from a fall. The little boy fell off a air raid shelter and the parents believed that it was just an accident. Following the next day, three mothers had came to police and stated that Mary tried to choke their daughters. It was a brief police interview, in which was noted, but there was no action taken against Mary. Then on May 25th, just a day before her 11th birthday, Mary had strangled a four-year-old boy. She ended up leaving the little boy in an abandoned building, and she did this with one of her friends whose name was Norma Bell. Norma Bell. They weren't related, but they just got together and started to do some crazy stuff, y'all. When she left the scene, she returned with a friend whose name was Norma Bell. And this is a girl who kinda had a key part into a lot of some of the things that she was doing. But what Mary did not realize is by leaving him in that abandoned building, she was, she was leaving that scene open to many people. So when she got there, there was already two young boys there who had found his body. When police got there, there was really no obvious signs of trauma to the little boy's body. There was only a little bit of blood and saliva. And then what was next to his body was a bottle of pills. So police just believed that he had overdosed by being or playing into these bottles of pills. He ended up ruling it an accident. But his family became a little suspicious when Mary showed up at his door to ask if he could come out and play. Ma'am, you done killed the little boy. How the little boy gonna come outside and play? It asked his mom if he could come out and play. And when the mom told Mary that the sad news that he was dead, Mary says to her, she already knew that and that she wanted to see his body in the coffin. And that's when the little boy's mother ended up slamming the door in her freaking face. And I would've did the same thing. Like, like, girl, get off my porch. But shortly after that, her and her friend Norma broke into a nursery school and ended up vandalizing the entire school. And what she did is they vandalized the school, leaving notes saying that they were, they, she, meaning Mary, was responsible for the death of the little boy who was previously strangled. Police believed that it was just a horrible prank 
gone wrong and that nursing school ended up putting an alarm system. This came to be a very great idea because why? Dum Dum, Mary and Norma returned to the school and they were ended up on this videotape. You then, you are the most dumbest 11 year old old ever. But again, you're 11 years old. You're not thinking. So you out here just killing folks. But police didn't really have anything to go off on because all they could do is point that they were lottering on the property and that was it. But Mary, of course, little Mary, she decides to tell a fellow classmate that she was responsible for killing the young boy. But by her being a show off and a liar in school, a lot of people did not believe her. But that is until another young boy turned up dead. Sis was on a whole <laughs> On July 31st, two months after the first incident, Mary and her friend Norma killed another young Him by strangulation, but this time they took it up a notch. They decided to, they mutated his body with scissors, scratching his thighs and butchering his penis. And the sibling went looking for her little brother. That's when Mary and Norma offered to help her find her young brother. Homegirl was like mad sick. Do you hear me? Even crazy is when the girl was looking for her brother, Mary even pointed like, oh no, he won't be there. And this created a frenzy in the town because you have two young boys dead two months from each other. So it sparked some fear in a lot of people when it pertains to their kids. So when the coroner did hit, when the coroner went over the young boy's body and the blood set and they were able to get him all cleaned up, there was an M scratched in on his body. Police also realized because of the lack of force, they also kind of pinpointed that it may have been a child that actually killed him. Both young girls started acting very invasive. They were acting very strange when it came to being around other people and when the police were coming into question. The day of the young boy's funeral, Mary was spotted outside of his she was seen laughing and rubbing her hands together when she seen the call. The police ended up calling her back for a second interview and this is where she tried to get very creative in her response. She lied and said that an eight year old boy was fighting with a young boy and ended up hitting him and then scratching his body with the scissors. That was the biggest mistake that she could have done because the police did not release that his body was mutated with scissors. So only she, as the killer, would know this information. So that's where she messed up. <laughs> Both Norma and Mary broke down under questioning in the investigation. And this is when Norma turned on, turns on Mary and basically says that everything was Mary's idea. She was the one that killed this young boy. But Mary tried to place the, you know, place the blame all on Norma. Both two girls were charged. So when it goes to trial, prosecutors try to pin it on her being like this evil person you know she deliberately killed this, these two young guys and in defense they put it on that she was evil born meaning her background her childhood placing it on all the things that she went through as a kid as to why she was making these decisions. such did agree that mary bell did commit these heinous acts and she was found guilty she was only convicted of manslaughter, not murder. And I think this was present because her, the psychiatrist stated that Mary showed a lot of signs of being a psychopath. <laughs> and Norma Bell was actually acquitted because she, they listed her as just falling under the cracks of someone, you know, being a follower. So she ended up being, she ended up getting off. Well, the judge did state that Mary was a dangerous person and they listed, I never heard of this, of course, because I'm not from the British area. Um, but they stated that she was sentenced to be in prison at Her Majesty's pleasure. And this is a British legal term that denotes an indeterminate sentence. So basically the powers that they feel is appropriate to let her out. So however long they choose until they see fit, they will let her out of pro. So 
Mary starts doing really well. She was following the orders and she was ended up out in 1980, but she was released on a license. She was still serving time, but this allowed her to kind of get her life in order. She was also given a new identity and because they felt like since she was a young child, she was able now as an adult, 23 years old, she was able to kind of have her own life and start fresh. But things kind of, I guess, took a slope, then grew worse for her because after she had her daughter, her daughter didn't know anything about her crime until she was about 14 years old. The tabloids ended up finding her and this created like a disaster for her life. They were, in the find they were able to find her common law husband and they were able to track her down. Family had to escape with bed sheets around them because tabloids ended up finding out where she lived. And she was actually, her and her family are under a protective order. What I did find is they are still protected until this day. It says, Belle's daughter anonymously was originally protected only until she reached the age of 18. However, on May 21st of 2003, Bell won a high court battle to have her own amenity and that of her daughter extended for life. Consequently, any court order permanently protecting the identity of a convict in Britain is sometimes known as the Mary Bell Order. The order was later updated to include Mary's grandfather, who is referred to as Z. Mary, Mary's current whereabouts are unknown. And I, re I did read that the families of the two young boys basically didn't want her to continue to have protection because they feel like, you know, their lives were ruined and she kind of got like this escape goat from a life, even though, you know, she was a young child killer. <laughs> and many will say that, you know, as being as though her age, I don't think she deserved the protection, but I mean, I guess they were kind of, I guess they were looking at a stance of her being only 11 years old and everything that she went through in her childhood because it does shape you. I can say that, but I ain't no killer, y'all. <clears throat> Excuse me, and don't push me because I don't want to be. <laughs> but that is pretty much the young child killer, Mary Bell. Mary Bell sparked a frenzy over there and her whereabouts are unknown. I mean, she's probably dead. She was born in 1957, like girl. But nonetheless, this, I felt like this video was really good to discuss because childhood trauma is real and you can become a killer. And pe some people don't even realize they have childhood trauma. You know, that's why it's so important to, that's why it's so important to um, research go to a therapist, expand your knowledge on things and stay positive and grateful in your now and do things to keep you level-headed. But that is pretty much today's bonus episode. Hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you on Sunday for Crime Story Sunday. Bye guys.